Hi there, I'm Justin from Wagon Tech, and in today's video, I'm going to answer all of the questions that we've heard regarding the brand new lithium cube line. So let's get right into it. The first question is, what type of battery is in the lithium cube? All of the models feature an LiCO2 lithium ion battery. Next question is, what size is the battery? Well, the Lithium Cube 325 has a 324 watt hour battery, the 500 model has a 515 watt hour battery, and the 1200 model has an 1166 watt hour battery. All right, the next question is, how many cells are in the battery? The 325 model is a 20 cell battery, the 500 is a 48 cell battery, and the 1200 is a 72 cell battery. What is the battery life cycle? The batteries have between a 500 to 1000 recharge life cycle. What is the battery voltage for each of the models of the cube? The 325 is a 14.4 volt, the 500 is a 14.8 volt, and the 1200 is a 21.6 volt battery. Can this go in a carry-on baggage or on an airplane? Right now, as it stands, the TSA regulations do not allow this to be brought aboard aircraft in carry-on luggage. Next question is, can I charge the lithium cube with a car battery charger? No, it is not possible with these devices because there's no way to get a battery charger clamp on the cube itself. Even if you could, it would have to be a lithium ion battery charger. Next question is, how can the lithium cube battery be charged? Well, the answer to that is all lithium cube models include an AC and DC charger. A solar panel, wind turbine, or water turbine can all be used to recharge a lithium cube. Both the Lithium Cube 500 and 1200 models can also be recharged using the USB-C input. The next question is, does the Lithium Cube have a BMS, or battery management system? And yes, they do have a battery management system on board that regulates the input and output power. How long does the Cube take to recharge in hours? Take a look at the chart that's going to be up on your screen right now, and it will show you all the different charging combinations for each device. Feel free to pause the video to take a better look. The next question is, I heard that you can charge a lithium cube with two chargers at the same time. How does that even work? Well, that is true that the lithium cube 500 and 1200 can be charged by two different inputs at the same time. There are a few ways that this can be accomplished, but the end result is the same. The lithium cube will charge faster than if only one input was used. One way that this can be accomplished is by plugging in the AC or DC charger into the charging input port on the front of the lithium cube. At the same time, you can plug in a charger to the USB-C input port. This will decrease the overall time it takes to recharge the unit. The next question is, what are the AC charger specs? Well, all the chargers are 100 to 120 volt AC input and 50 to 60 hertz. The 325 model is a 19 volt 3.4 amp output, which is 65 watts. The 500 model is a 19 volt 3.8 amp output, which is 72 watts output. And the 1200 is a 24 volt 5 amp or 120 watt output. The next question from our customer is, what are the DC charger specs? Well, the included DC charger is simply a 12 volt input, which is what your car outputs in the 12 volt cigarette lighter socket. The next question is, what are the input charging port specs and what size is that port? Well, the input charging port accepts DC 12 to 24 volts. The dimensions of the input ports are on the 325, it's a four millimeter by 1.7, which is the same for the 500. And then the 1200 is a 6.5 by three millimeter port. Next question is how often does the cube need to be charged? And what happens if it sits in storage for a year? You'll be surprised this is a question we get quite often. We recommend that the lithium cube is recharged after each use or every six months of storage. After sitting in storage for a year, there will be some discharge, but the unit will be good to use and should be recharged as soon as possible. Next up, we have a bunch of solar charging questions. The first question is, how do I connect a solar panel? If using the Anderson power pole type connectors, you can plug it directly into the Lithium Cube 1200 Anderson power port on the front of the device. On the Lithium 325 and 500 models, you'll want to use the included Anderson pigtail adapter. Next question is, what type of solar panel can I use? Well, as long as the panel is made for 12 volt systems and outputs a nominal voltage of 12 volts, which is a standard type panel, any solar panel can be used whether it's a monocrystalline, polycrystalline, or thin film type. Next question is, what solar connectors are compatible? The Anderson power pole type connectors are ideal. MC4 or the DC power ports and other DC connectors are acceptable, but may require an adapter, which are not included. 
The next question is, does a solar panel need a solar charge controller? In this case, no, it does not, as the lithium cubes have a built-in MPPT solar charge controller. So the next question is a follow-up. What is the difference between an MPPT and a PWM charge controller? In short, a PWM or pulse width modulation controller is the most common and widely used type of controller with less efficiency than the MPPT type. MPPT or maximum power point tracking controllers are able to optimize the output of the solar panel and extract an additional 15 to 30% more power than a PWM controller. The next question is what is the largest size panel that I can connect? On the 325, you can put up to a 60 watt solar panel, the 500 can accept an 80 watt solar panel, and the 1200 can accept up to 100 watt solar panel. Another question that makes sense is, do I have to max out the solar panel capacity when charging via solar? So no, you do not have to match the maximum allowable panel to the lithium cube. For instance, if we were looking at the lithium cube 500, which has a maximum solar input of 80 watts, you can certainly use any size panel up to the maximum capacity of 80 watts. The only detriment to using a smaller panel would be slower charging. This is a common question we receive for our power inverters, not only to the lithium cubes, but people always ask, what are AC outlets? AC, or alternating current outlets, are those three-pronged receptacles that you commonly find on the wall outlet in your house. These provide between 110 volt and 120 volt and power most of your household appliances. Next question is, what type of inverter is inside the cube? Well, all lithium cube models feature a pure sine wave inverter. Pure sine wave are the purest form of sine wave there is, which is commonly found in the wall outlets of your house. Next question is, what are the inverter running specifications? Well, the 325 model is a 300 watt continuous and 350 watt peak inverter. The 500 is a 500 watt continuous and 600 watt peak inverter. And the lithium cube 1200 model is a 1000 watt continuous and 1350 watt peak inverter. Next question is why does the fan come on and what causes it to turn on or off? The fan will come on briefly when the AC power button is pressed as a test cycle. During normal operation, the fan will automatically come on once the unit temperature reaches 104 degrees Fahrenheit or above. Next question is, what is the difference between pure sine wave and modified sine wave? This is a lengthy topic, take a look at the link here, but the gist of it is that pure sine wave, or PSW for short, are the pure sine wave form and allow appliances to run as intended. Next question is, can this be used overseas? This is a frequency question and charging question for the lithium cube models. The lithium cube inverters output 120 volts at 60 hertz. The AC charger input has an acceptable range of 100 to 240 volts at 50 to 60 hertz, which means that the cube can operate 60 hertz appliances, but are able to be recharged from most AC power sources worldwide. The first one is, what is the difference between USB power ports? Well, the USB-A is your standard USB power port. This is the one that you think of when you hear the word USB port. The USB-C is a relatively new USB power port that is symmetrical, meaning that there is no right side up or upside down. This port is also smaller than USB-A and is widely adopted as a new standard. Next question is, what's the difference between PD and QC charging? QC or quick charge charging is through the USB-A power ports and uses high voltage and high current to quickly charge devices that support QC protocol. PD or power delivery charging is through the USB-C ports and like QC charging requires a high voltage and high current to charge devices. The biggest difference between PD and QC charging is that PD charging currents are higher than those from QC. The higher current supports laptops and other devices with larger power demands. All right, next question is, what is USB-C input slash output? Well, the USB-C input means that the lithium cube accepts an incoming charge current for recharging. The USB-C output means that the lithium cube can supply power to recharge your devices, like a phone or a tablet. Next question is, what are the DC power ports used for? The DC power ports can be used as a regulated 12 volt DC power source, just like the DC socket. You may opt to plug the 12 volt DC accessory cord directly into the power port, or use a 12 volt DC socket adapter like the ones we sell right here. All right, the next question is, can you operate the DC power ports and the DC socket concurrently? Yes, all of the DC outputs may be used concurrently as long as the combined maximum amperage has not been exceeded. The max for each unit is detailed below. Next question is, does the Anderson power port allow power in and out? The answer to that is no. The Anderson power port only allows for input power to the lithium cube. 
What do the symbols on the LED display mean? Take a look at the chart right here and it'll show you all the display icons and what their meanings are. The next question is, how much does it weigh? Well, the Lithium Cube 325 weighs 7.1 pounds, the 500 model is 11.7 pounds, and the 1200 only weighs 24.5 pounds. What is the operating temperature range for each of the devices? All of the devices have a 32 degree to 113 degree Fahrenheit operating range. The storage temperature range, on the other hand, is 14 degrees Fahrenheit to 149 degrees Fahrenheit. Next question is, what is a flat pack or pack flat handle? This is a feature where the carrying handle folds down flush with the top of the cube. This allows for a flat surface where items can be placed on top of the lid. All right, we finally reached the end of our frequently asked questions or FAQs are about our brand new lithium cubes. If you have any other questions or something that we missed, leave them down in the comments below. Give us a like and subscribe to our channel and thank you very much for watching.